Hello everyone, this is Kilo, your host as usual, and today we are going to talk about my collection history, because I collect a lot, and um, a bit about my Japan trip. So, if you want some context, there's... A lot of information on my WordPress blog, which I will link. Um, not trying to, you know, force it or anything, but uh, it's there if you want information or more pictures. But um, we're going to start with my collection history. So I have been collecting anime merch for roughly three and a half years. I want to say that um, it started in January or February of 2016. Um, some exact date. I'm not entirely sure when it was the, you know, the exact start, but uh, I started collecting with Hyperdimension Neptunia Limited Edition Games. Which, at the time, were relatively inexpensive. Because, just as some short trivia, um, Neptunia wasn't as big as it is now, as it was three and a half years ago. So, I bought a bunch of those for, you know... So I could actually play them and as display pieces. Um, unfortunately, that didn't last all that long. I didn't, you know, hold up collecting Neptunia merch for a whole lot longer. Um, a lot of it was very, very hasty buying, like. The feeling when you first start a hobby, where you just you just want to really, really get into it, and that was kind of how I felt about hyperdimension Neptunia stuff. So for the first, I don't know, six months, that was kind of what I did. I was, you know, constantly, constantly buying Neptunia stuff, but at the same time learning about all the, you know, kind of intricacies about, you know, shipping and what store to buy from and what's legit and what's not. But it was kind of a rough start, I'm not going to lie. Um, and <laughs> what's even more ironic is that the majority of the stuff I bought in that first half a year is now sold. I sold a lot of it off to make money. I sold a lot of it off just because I need space. Um, I kept the most valuable items. So I still have stuff like um, this one really rare noir tapestry, this uh, really rare uni and Neptgear tapestry, the entire uh, Neptunia Japanese box set, Neptunia V2 English. Stuff like that. Stuff that's legitimately hard to find, but um, I didn't feel was necessary to sell off. So, I guess the moral of the starting is that Neptunia was kind of my foray into collecting stuff. Uh, again, a rough, a rough start, but that's kind of you know, expect it when you're just getting into something with the magnitude of this. So after this, I discovered, or not after this, during this, I discovered what scale figures were. Uh, scale figures, as in, I mean, figures that have an actual scale, like one-seventh or one-eighth, um, not just a random height. So, um, 
I got really, really fascinated with this area. I did so much research on this. I did a lot of, you know, making sure I'm not screwing this up. Just making sure that I'm getting what I want from where I want in the right way. And in, I want to say it was late March, I got my first, or late March of 2016, excuse me, I got my first scale, which was Alters Blackheart from, of course, at the time, Hyperdimension Neptunia, which I was, you know, like I said, really, really into, and I was just amazed at the quality, the build, the just overall aesthetic of everything it, it, it just fascinated me because prior to this the figures I had seen were like pops or shitty action figures and then I get this and I think holy shit these the, these so called they're not action figures, but these figures can be extremely amazing quality. I mean, they're expensive, yeah, but look at what you're getting. It was just that moment where everything started, I felt. So, from that point, I still kind of collected Neptunia stuff, like I said, for about six months from the start. But I became more and more interested in figures, like scale figures, um, quality scale figures. And I bought quite a few in the six months after I bought Blackheart. So, like, kind of overlapping here, but... Um, I really went overboard. I bought just just so so many where to the point I lost space. Which then led me to buying my first Daytoff, which is if you're not familiar, Daytoffs are these four level glass cases um, that you can buy at IKEA's. And um, they're really inexpensive and good for a uh, figure display. Or just stuff display in general. Whatever. So that was what led me to, to do that. So yeah, 2016 was a very aggressive month. Or year. Excuse, God, excuse me. For really getting me into... Hey... There's all these different sites. There's tons of different figures that are really, really good quality. There's all these companies that produce all these different quality figures. And it, it was a good year. It was a really good year. The end of 2016, um, my room, my collection, which was zero at first, had gone from this blank slate, this really boring room, to this kind of vibrant space. Alright, let's move on to the next part. Um, as for the next part, let me just kind of sum up 2017 really quick here. 2017, I kind of took a quick respite because I had some school stuff and I wasn't making as much money. Um, so I kind of slowed down a bit. I still bought stuff, but um, I did slow down a bit. So that was just kind of how it was at that time. But... Um, I just wanted to quickly reference that anyway. Let's go back. Um, let's talk about the 
the shift from just figures to the shift from general anime merch. Um, at first, I was convinced, well, no, not at first. When I just started collecting figures, I was convinced that was going to be the thing. You know, like, I was just going to focus on figures. Scale figures, not, no Nendoroids, no, you know, prize figures, no anything else. But, things slowly started to shift. Um, initially, I had bought a few Neptunia tapestries, which, um, a few, you know, a lot of I still have. A lot of the stuff I actually kept. Um... And I began to realize that these tapestries, they're, they're not only really nice looking, but they're valuable in nature. So I started getting interested in those, for one. I started getting interested in keychains and straps because they look nice on your key ring. I bought a few of those. Um... I bought a couple art books and a couple Dengeki G's magazines because, you know, trying to just expand my horizons is all I can say. I know it's cheesy, but, um, bought some Blu-rays, even though some of them I couldn't watch unless it was Love Live, which I'm going to talk about next, uh, just generally expanded what I was initially thinking I was going to do because just doing figures you know looking back now of course would have been really dull because I still love figures of course but having this variety of stuff um, having your place decorated with Figures and tapestries and, you know, books, magazines, sheets, keychains, Blu-rays is just, it's great. It looks so much better and it makes for a really good collection. Alright, so aside from that tangent, um, give me one minute, I'm going to get a drink. Sorry about that. Um, let's move on. So what I just mentioned, we're going to talk about <laughs> the big one, um, Love Live. Uh, Love Live is the prime focus of my collection at the moment. It is the kind of like centerpiece of everything that I have. And again, if you've read my WordPress thing, you'd see that, yeah, it's, it, it's Love Live. Um, so let's kind of just discuss my history with Love Live for a little bit. Um, Love Live's been around for a really long time. I think they just celebrated their, recently, their ninth anniversary. Um, back when it was the Muse era, but, um, I am an aqua guy, but I'll discuss that. I came across Love Live in early 2016. I can't exactly recall when, but it was around that time. Um, it was before Muse had their uh, final live. You know, with, for those who aren't aware, that's the, uh, the last show, and then they broke up. Which was a huge deal at the time. So then we had Aqua, who had been announced roughly, you know, I want to say it was like 10 months before, 
in midsummer and everyone was saying oh aqua is just this uh they're just this muse clone they're just uh there there's no way they can replace the original muse and that was the sentiment for a pretty long time and at this time i was playing um i started playing School Idol Festival, I'm going to refer to this as SIF, uh, the mobile game for Love Live, which is a rhythm game. Um, so, my first exposure was to Muse, of course, as I said, and I kind of was on that bandwagon of, oh, it's impossible to replace Muse. Can't possibly, possibly ever replace the original Love Live group. And again, I kind of just fell into that mindset. Um, there were a few Aqua cars being introduced into this game. Or, um, this is on the English server, by the way. On the game, slowly, slowly, slowly. And. I wasn't really sure what to think. I wanted to like them, but I was just still under this mindset of, oh, but it's it, it it's not Muse. Surely Aqua can't replace Muse. Like I said, that was at the time. This was probably May 2016, I'm going to say. And, um... I just couldn't get behind the character designs at the time, because at this time, of course, there was no anime. The anime released um, a bit later, which I would obviously watch, but um, at this time, no. It was... Excuse me, sorry about that. It was hard for me to get behind the idea that... There could be a group that could replace the original Love Live group. Which, looking back in retrospect, is kind of like... Who cares if they were the original? Who cares? But, at the, again, at the time, I was just trying to like Aqua, but unsure. And then I watched the anime. And then I started thinking, hmm. Some of these characters kind of seem like Muse clones. Like Chica got compared to Hornica. Rico got compared to Umi. Blah, blah, blah. But the characters just struck me as better. But I really didn't get into it immediately after that I wasn't like oh shit I have to be this idol fan now no 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 um it did take me a while to transition into like the idol bitch I am now um uh, let's see I guess throughout 2016 and 2017 my Love for the series, my love for the characters and the seiyuu grew, and I started buying more merchandise, obviously, and at those times, I thought it was just kind of like a casual thing, like, yeah, I like Love Live, but I also like Hyperdimension Neptunia, but that was fading. So did I need a new thing to get attached to? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But there was just, like I said, there was just this allure. I mean, I really liked the music. The characters were great. The, you know, the setting of Sunshine was gorgeous. And it just started drawing me in. So, 
Fast forward not much to 2018, I started getting more aggressive with this kind of thing. Um, like I said, in 2017, I kind of took a bit of a respite at one point with merch buying. But in 2018, I started being more aggressive in terms of, of live merchandise, not just figures. So, I started getting all these Nendoroids and the, um, you know, the original Altar Love Live figures, Nessoburi's prize figures, you know, everything. Late 2018 was more Aqua based because that was when we had more Aqua stuff coming out, but. I think I've made my point on this one. And then, of course, um, 2018 was when I first went to Japan, November 2018, um, where uh, I spent time in both uh, Shinjuku, Tokyo, and uh, Numazu slash Chiyo. And got to see just everything that actually was in the anime that I had grown to love. And it was all so just, there was no errors. They did it so well. And I had some fun with the stamp stations and that and but yeah I, I went to a lot of the major locales but did miss a few which made me kind of sad but um, yeah I think that's what kind of solidified my okay I am in idle hell for life, or not for life at least, but for a long time, and then I went back in April, which is my most recent one, and I went back, of course, and I, you know, I went to the other places that I missed, I stayed in Riverside Hotel, which is the site of Yoshiko's apartment, um, I went to some really obscure places, I got a lot of stamps I missed, I bought a lot more merch, I returned to some of the places, it was just like, I don't want to leave, but, you know, not all good things can last, and it was an amazing few days there, I got a lot of nice stuff, I saw just some of the most amazing stuff again. I mean, this is in my uh, WordPress thingy, but um, part of the time I spent in Uchida, I walked with this Korean guy who I met on the bus. Um, it was the weirdest thing, because, you know, he was kind of like looking over at me frequently. And we didn't actually say anything because I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if he actually spoke English at all. And then I saw him taking a picture when the bus stopped. And I looked over at it and kind of laughed a bit. And then he started talking. So after that, we go to the last stop and we start walking together. So... In Uchida, I spent a lot of time with this Korean guy, and it was <laughs> unexpectedly, serendipitously fun. But, you know, I haven't heard from him since, so I hope he remembers me. But that's, okay, I'm gonna just kind of back off of that. But the point is, um, Love Live stuff is kind of my forte at the moment um, if you look around my room you'll see I don't know 
60% love live, maybe even 70%. That's what it's come to. <laughs> That's what it's come to. Um, no, but, uh, yeah. All right, so let's finally move on to something uh, different, like um, the various different kinds of merch that I collect. Um, start with tapestries. Uh, tapestries are a hard one. Tapestries are, you know, also known as wall scrolls, are a hard one because they're both big as hell, so the shipping is ass, and very, very easy to bootleg. And I've seen numerous bootlegs. Hell, I've one of the first tapestries I bought was a bootleg. So it's not hard to buy a bootleg on accident. But basically tapestries are the things you hang on the walls, they have a a strap, like a a string, sorry two pipes on one top, one on the bottom, and you hang them. Usually, like, the most common size is B2, which is a foreign, uh, a foreign paper size, so you can go look that up if you're interested. Um, but tapestries are, um, pretty interesting to me. I think they make for a really good display pieces, and... There are a lot of good ones. There's a lot of lewd ones. There's a lot of, you know, safer work ones. There's a lot of just pretty inexpensive ones if you're on budget. But um, if I had more wall space, of course, I would buy more. But at this point, I have very little wall space or tapestries, but um, they are occasionally very annoying to find, very annoying to get. Uh, a lot of the good ones are sold on the secondhand market, which I'm, I may or may not talk about in this, uh, in this video, but they're sometimes really annoying to find. Not always, I mean, sometimes you can order them on the big sites, but, uh, the rare ones, the ones that are made by, uh, Dojin artists are just sometimes impossible to find. So, it's weird. I don't know why I'm so fascinated by them. Because a lot of people would just say, oh, just, you can just go on eBay and buy a bunch of cheap ones instead of paying out the ass for these real ones. But, like I said, I do what I have to do. Okay, next on the agenda is small stuff. When I say small stuff, I mean um, things like keychains or rubber straps, which have a surprisingly strong presence in the collecting community. Um, I was amazed to learn how prominent they were, because to me, I mean, yeah, they're cute. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, you can put them on your key ring and be a dank memer, but I never thought it would be that big. I I have a f quite a few myself, personally, but um, I know some people really go all out on stuff like straps and keychains, like you can get a cork board and just put pins on them and people have these immaculate displays of 
keychains and straps and whatever else you can put on a keychain. And it's just like, wow. So there's that. Uh, another small thing. Oh god, okay. Um, TCG, there's that too. This should probably get its own category, but uh, fuck it. Um, TCG is a huge, huge investment. It is so ridiculously expensive for what you get that I find it hard to recommend it to anybody unless you like trading card games that much unless you like RNG that much because hell it's all RNG basically you get the what you would want to do is buy this box and it would have X on the packs in it and you open all these said packs and hope that you get something good and you might get one if you're lucky two good cards but for the price it's really really hard for me to recommend at all um, I like it personally but it's just so expensive like I'm amazed at the people who buy these you know like multiple boxes multiple as in you know, a dozen, and just open them all in hopes for a complete set, which of course is like the goal, but that's really unrealistic at a lot of points. God damn. Anyway, next small thing, um, clear files. Clear files are literally just like, okay, picture a manila folder, you know, like those generic brownish folders, right? That's what clear files are, but they're kind of opaque and always have a design on them and are really collectible and very, very cheap. I have so many of them because they're so cheap and they look so good for what you know their price is but the problem is displaying them isn't always easy I mean I've always considered framing them but that is hard because again I have limited wall space and it's not like you're putting a poster or a photo in a frame it's a piece of plastic so unfortunately a lot of mine are just sitting in a drawer at the moment so hopefully I can figure out how to get them you know well displayed in the next you know few months Okay, what else? I mean, there's a lot of really small stuff. I mean, we could talk for ages and ages about small stuff. But I'm not really sure it's worth it. So I'm going to move on. Um, again, if you want to see any other small things, I'm going to put my WordPress in the description. Books. Books and magazines. Um, art books are really popular. Art books usually feature the art of A, a particular anime, or B, a particular artist. Like, for example, there might be, or they're not, <laughs> might be is the wrong word. There's t a ton of Love Live art books. But if you want to see some kind of particular artists work all in one volume like Kantoku for example um, you can get that too um, 
they're generally kind of pricey over here in the west but over in this uh you know over in japan i found them to be reasonably priced but it's literally just pictures so there's very little wording uh, i mean there's some there can be some i'm not gonna say i don't want to misinform but it's just like art of whatever the anime the series the artist you buy from and those are really popular um i'm not a huge fan of them personally i only have what three art books but um no i want to say no four okay four but those are really like really really special to me and then you have magazines and stuff um dengeki i'm gonna mention just a couple dengeki bunko dengeki playstation dengeki g's um all these magazines that syndicate japan that have news on various things like dengeki bunko is a games dengeki g's is a lot of you know um you know girl stuff you know anything that's girl related i got it i'm using such wrong words galga whatever i'm gonna call it galga and dengeki playstation is like playstation stuff those are kind of collectible, um, like Dengeki G's, for example, has a lot of Love Live art on the covers, which is, you know, nice for my display personally, and they come with posters a lot of times, so you can start your collection off right with a bunch of posters, <laughs> um, but that's that, I mean, they're kind of niche. I wouldn't, like, point you in that direction if you asked me. But for people who want to kind of enhance their collection displays or actually can read Japanese and care about the news in them, of course, yeah, uh, the magazines are a nice touch. All right, next um, is... Oh, this is a big one. Media. Media as in uh, CDs, Blu-rays, and anything else that is, you know, DVD or Blu-ray based. DVD, CD, Blu-ray based. So, for example, Love Live. Um, since they're a music group it's very popular to collect their CDs, uh, which are, of course, disc-based, but um, the issue is you can find the music easily on the internet, so a lot of people say, oh, physical media, it's dead, which it kind of is, but what people have to understand is there's a collectible factor behind them. I mean, I have quite a few Love Live CDs and I would not give them up for much of anything and I have a lot of other rare CD collections that um, despite the fact that you know oh I can just go find this somewhere else um, I wouldn't I, w I wouldn't give it up they're just very collectible they look fantastic and it sometimes makes me sad that physical media is dying. As for Blu-rays, those are far more collectible. Um, Blu-rays are weird in Japan. When you want to buy a Blu-ray set in Japan, or not in, in America, for example, you go on Amazon, for example, and you can find the entire season for I don't know 
40 bucks on average, I'm going to say. And then you go to Japan's versions in one volume. When I say volume, I will explain what I mean by that. A volume is like two episodes. Or a special edition volume we're going to talk about is like MSRP. I'm talking about like $60. $60, $65. Uh, when converted. So on the MSRP market in Japan, to complete the entire set, you need to pay... You do, you do the math. Like $450 dollars $450, And that's absolutely ridiculous. When, meanwhile, in America, when we get the entire season, it's a fraction of the price and someone's probably already put it up for pirating which again I don't approve of I don't think you should go do that but I'm just saying that blu-rays are a very strange thing and then they drop in price in Japan so like like I said MSRP is you know, 7,000 yen, say, which here is like 65 dollars, depending on the conversion rate. And then in a few months, if you're lucky, you can get them for 10 dollars, which I would pay for. I would pay 10 dollars volume, even 15. Which is really weird to me. It's just like... I'm not going to go into it, of course, but it's it's a product of the anime industry. Because they have to make money. And working in the anime industry is hard because it's hard to make money. Anime doesn't generally make a lot of money unless you throw in the Blu-rays, the merchandise, the advertising prices on sites or whatever, but that's kind of the gist on that. Alright, so I guess the last topic we have is various things. Um... There's a lot of things that kind of don't really go into any category. Like, for example, we have shikishis, which are these um, square boards with characters on them uh, that some people really, really go for. They're not really anything that special, but sometimes they come with, you know... Uh, a video, or, you know, a visual novel, or they're handed out at a movie or whatever. But um, I personally really like them. I think they look fantastic, but that's just me. Uh, next, Nesso berries, plushies. Let's just say plushies. You know, there's a lot of different plush stuff. You know, personally, I'm not actually a huge fan of plush stuff. I have a lot of it, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, a lot of them I got a long time ago. Some of them I got from special edition stuff. Uh, some of them I got as gifts. There's a few I love. Um, and then there's, you know, the Nesso Berries. Which are, you know, very odd looking lay down plushes. But that's an option if you're at all interested. And let me think real quick. If there's anything else I am missing here in terms of my collection at least. Well, I could probably go on for a long time about 
random stuff, but I think that's all I have to say about the different types of merch. So I think I am going to break this video here because there's not really much else I can think of that I need to talk about. Um, this video is mostly meant to talk about my collection history and the various types of merch, not any kind of walkthrough or anything on like how to do it. So, um, I hope this was interesting at the very least. And again, I will post, um, I'll post the link to the WordPress and possibly any pictures that I use in the video. So, thank you for listening, and I'll see you in another video. Sayonara.